some crazy shenanigans with Fireball that led to the spell being banned, and some DMs who just didn't respect the players' backstories. This is Taylor's Tavern Tales, and let's get into the RPG Reddit Horror Stories. I pull off a massive multi-kill with Fireball and never get to use the spell again. So I've been playing a campaign with the same group of friends for ages. We met once a week and played for a couple hours at a time. We mostly played fairly short, low-level campaigns, with the DMs rotating, so we didn't really get an opportunity to try out higher-level stuff. One time, though, the DM at the time decided to run a longer campaign, from level 1 to 10. It was really fun, even though we progressed quite slowly. After about a half a year real-time, we finally hit level 5. Now we were a party of 5, a sorcerer, me, a wizard, a cleric, a paladin, and a rogue. Now, both wizards and I took fireball on level up, because why wouldn't you? And we were really excited to blow some stuff up. The DM liked to run relatively long dungeons, with little to no opportunity to rest. So we always had to conserve resources, and in fact ended up with only two cantrips left anyways. So both the wizard and I hoarded our third level spell slots. We reached the final battle with one each. I used counterspell once, and the wizard burned a slot on dispel magic. The final battle against a necromancer who's created simulacra of the party and raised a horde of skeletons. All of them were quite close together. Perfect, right? We roll initiative, I roll a 19, and the wizard rolls a 17, so we go first and second. Two fireballs later, and the enemies are just down to the necromancer and the paladin simulacrum, with everything else blown to bits before they could even move. The DM visibly annoyed, but we continued onward, leaving the dungeon and heading back to the city. The next quest is to retrieve a magic gemstone from the tribe living inside a volcano. Because of the location, all enemies and demons are immune to fire. Okay, fair enough, we have spells other than than Fireball, and the Paladin gets a chance to shine in the narrow tunnels. By itself, nothing wrong so far, but we keep playing, and for quest after quest, it feels like everything is designed to specifically prevent us from using Fireball. Sometimes the enemies are immune to fire, even when you wouldn't think they would be, like vampires or random mercenaries. Sometimes the dungeons are too tight, with poor lines of sight which ends up making ranged attacks next to impossible, and screws over rogue as well as spellcasters. At one time, every single bandit we fought had a hostage. Several IRL months later, and I have not cast Fireball a single time, since the first time. It's starting to get quite annoying. But then the last straw happens. We're in a dwarven mine. We fought through the narrow tunnel, chasing a warlord. Finally, we corner him in a larger cavern. I throw a fireball at him. Then the wooden supports, which had never been before mentioned, get destroyed by the explosion, and the ensuing cave kills half the party. And that was how my first ever D&D group fell apart. It's not funny, but it's kind of funny. I mean, it's not, it's not funny. That DM was just so spiteful. Like, like, what the heck? As a DM, if you're going to be spiteful and just kind of mean like that to your players and not letting them have their time to shine with Fireball, because Fireball's such a cool spell, just nix Fireball at the beginning. Just say your players can't take Fireball if it's gonna be too much of a game-breaking spell, or you just don't want to have to deal with it. Like, as a DM, that's what I would have done if I didn't want to allow Fireball, but I'm gonna allow Fireball because it's funny as hell because it's funny as heck. Yeah, it might be a little bit annoying for me, but come on, man. You want to let your players actually have fun and feel powerful in the game because that's that's what it's about. I mean, it's also about, you know, role play and adventures and all that fun stuff, but it's also about getting to feel cool and getting to have your moment in the spotlight. And it sounds like the wizard and the sorcerer just had that one moment and then didn't really get to shine for the rest of the campaign. Very, very strange. Oh my gosh, and then the DM also being super spiteful and not mentioning any wood or anything in the cave, but then after you cast Fireball, the whole cave collapses and half of the party dies? That's just not how you run D&D, in my opinion. Like, at least if you were DM and you forgot to mention that there's like wood, uh, paneling or whatever, wood infrastructure. Like when the person says that they're going to cast fireball, say that to them. Say, hey, just so you know, there's wood here. It could collapse or be like, hey, maybe your wizard has like a little bit of a premonition or the sorcerer or like maybe one of the other players notices there's like wood in the room. I don't know. It's just not fun for the players. And then it's not fun for the DM either. Weird all around, weird all around. Well, I'm sorry OP that that group fell apart, but 
I hope you're playing in another group now that the DM lets you cast Fireball. Well, I'm gonna move on to the next one. Don't you hate it when you all agree on stuff with your DM and then they go back on it without telling you? This happened to me only twice, but both times it resulted in me leaving the campaign. The first time, I met a group of friends while playing games online. They invited me to their D&D 5e campaign. I joined and we talked to the DM, very obviously the leader of the group. Everyone seemed to follow her lead. We agreed on a backstory for my character. Character was wild magic sorcerer that caused some accidents and now lived as a fugitive, but wanted to find a way to clear their name. The DM pressed me for details, so I expanded more on the town my character lived in, their family and the things they had done. She agreed on everything enthusiastically, so I thought everything was fine. On our first session, we began with her narrating something about each character and what they were doing, but the one for my character didn't make any sense. I didn't even recognize she she was talking about my character at first. I tried to correct her and she got really angry. She moved me to a separate voice channel to talk to me alone. She said stuff about how my backstory was boring and didn't fit with the setting. I asked her why she didn't bring it up with me before we talked about it, and she just told me that I was being difficult and taking too long, so she was going to keep going as she was. So I left. The second time, me and the DM talked about my backstory and the plans for my character in the future. He was very adamant that we plan out what kind of story I wanted for my character. But the first session, he made my character get some mutations and forced me to make some choices that basically erased everything we talked about. I tried talking to him, but he said that's just how it goes sometimes and that stories are unpredictable. So I left. That's so wild that both the stories have to do with your character backstory and then the DMs just changing your backstory. That's super unfortunate, OP. However, I don't know. I just, for some reason, this one seems kind of off. Like I feel, I don't know, I could be very wrong, but I feel like there's just something off here. I kind of want to know what your character's backstory was that the DMs were both just like, nah, I don't like it. Yeah, it just seems kind of weird to me. I mean, the whole thing of a DM just like changing your backstory. Yeah, that is weird and not okay to do. As DMs, you gotta be working with your players and figure out how you can enhance their backstory, but with the player's consent and working alongside the player. I don't know if that made any sense. I feel like I'm just rambling here. But yeah, just not okay on both the DM's parts for just changing a player's backstory because what the heck, not okay. Not fun for the player. Just not okay and weird. Well, I think I'm gonna leave it here for now. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give me a like and subscribe and turn on that post notification bell. It really helps. As well as if you like me and the channel, think about becoming a channel member or sign up for my Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, I would like to thank my Tavern Voyager patron, ZB. Thank you so much, ZB. I appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much for becoming a Tavern Voyager. And if you'd like to support me and all I do, think about becoming a patron. The links are in the description below. I've got some fun stuff on there, bonus content, etc. As well as the links to all my other social medias are down there. And if you want to nominate me for the Crit Awards, which are closing on May 31st, nominations are closing, think about nominating me there for Best Up and Coming YouTube Creator. Well, that's all for now. I will see you in the next one.